Hey guys, uh, so I wanted to make a quick video in case there's somebody who ends up in the same boat that I am in right now. Um, I have a Ubiquiti Nano Station M5 and I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally plugged it into a PoE switch that was uh, set to 48 volt. Uh, this device is meant for 24 volt and it essentially fried this pre piece of equipment. So after scouring the Ubiquiti forums, uh, I was able to find a solution that was able to bring this back to life for me. Um, now just a big warning here, this will void the warranty on the device. But if you're kind of in my boat, doesn't really matter because plugging it into the wrong voltage will also void your warranty. Um, so this should only be done if your device is dead and it's kind of the last ditch effort to bring it back to life rather than just throwing it in the garbage or sending it off to recycling. So the first step is we need to get the uh, get access to the internal board that's inside the unit. And so to do that the first step is here on the back there is a sticker um, and we're going to go ahead, you slide a screwdriver under there and you can peel that sticker off and you can see that there is a Phillips head screw. We're going to go ahead and take the screwdriver, remove that screw, and then we'll show you uh, how to slide the board out. Alright, so you can see that we removed the Phillips screw that's here in the back of the device. And so now we can go ahead and slide out the internal card. The easiest way to do that is to have a flathead screwdriver and put it in kind of underneath in between the outer casing and this inner part. You'll lift up gently as you pull out and the device should slide out. Uh, once you have it started then you can just with your hand gently pull and the internal card should just come completely out of the plastic case. So as we look at the circuit board here, um, between the two Ethernet port, there used to be a small chip. And as I read through the forums, it sounds like the purpose of that chip was to act as kind of a safeguard against people who plug this into too much power. And so when I plugged it into the 48 volt, it fried that chip, um, but it didn't fry the rest of the board. So by removing that chip, um, it will help, it will bring the device back to life, but you've removed that safeguard. So if you ever plug it back into 48 volt power, you'll fry everything across the board. Um, the chip that I removed was quite small, obviously. Um, it was stamped with something like GEZ on the chip. Uh, and so that will help you to identify which chip it was. I just took a flathead screwdriver and gently pried up and tried to work at it from a couple different angles. I was able to finally get the chip off. Uh, big warning here, you don't want to obviously scratch up any of the other uh, circuits or paths or anything there. So as gently as you can remove uh, that chip, then it will be better for you in the long run. So once you have that chip removed, you can go ahead and slide the casing back into the housing. And you'll have to probably lift up just a little bit to get it to slide in there, uh, do some finagling. But once you have it all back in, put the screw back in the back and your device should be good to go. I hope that helps you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it in the comments. I'd love to help however I can. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a great day.